I have here with me uh, Kevin McMahon and Monty Brown, both uh, connected with the Institute for, for quite some time in a number of different capacities. Uh, I know you both presented mm -hmm. under the auspices of the Institute, and uh, now Monty is the, the director. Kevin uh, is in charge of the Metaphysics Colloquium and some right. other things as well, right? My right-hand man, as you can see. Yeah, that's basically the main thing yeah, that I do, yeah. the colloquium. Yeah, so... Um, we're doing some, some uh, interviews in part so that you can get a sense of what goes on here at the Institute because uh, I think a lot of people outside of academics don't have much idea about you know, what academics actually do. Mm -hmm. So um, why don't we start by each of you introducing yourselves and, and saying how you got involved with the Institute in the, the first place because I don't actually know all Okay, well, Kevin, you were actually on the original committee, so why don't you start off? And then... I was, yes. Yeah, so Kevin McMahon teach theology here at St. Anselm since 1984. And when it was that uh, John Fortin, Father John Fortin, member of the community here, first had the idea of the Institute, and when would that have been, Monty? Uh, I think it was, a, it was a, the idea of the collection started first mm -hmm. around 1990. Kevin okay. Staley got a, a summer research grant to work on a bibliography to, to collect the, the works of Anselm. And then I think then we planned on a conference in 2000. Right. And then the Institute actually got underway in 2001. Okay, 2001. Mm -hmm. And to have the college supporting the Institute meant there had to be an oversight committee, mm -hmm. okay. a faculty okay. oversight committee. And so uh, I was appointed a member of that committee um, because of my background with medieval theology. And, and they like to have a historian and someone from philosophy, someone from English literature. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was made a chair and uh, have remained yeah, in right. that august position because who else wants to do it? Nobody, yeah. uh, you know, since. Uh, and, and then um, one of the pro when we were talking about things the Institute might do, of course, we had that that uh, Saint Anselm conference, mm -hmm. and we were still thinking of with what regularity we would have that kind of a conference, an invited conference mm -hmm. on Saint Anselm. So we had the one in two thousand, and then the next one would have been two thousand two. We did two thousand two, two thousand four. We tried to do another in two thousand six and didn't have. Enough I remember, people. yeah. So we expanded a little bit the horizon of what we wanted to do. Had a, had a conference in 2009 for the That's right. anniversary of Anselm's death. And then we just had one in 2014. And the plan is now to have one every three years. So it's spring of 2017. Yeah, so at first it was like every other year. Mm -hmm. Then we discovered that would be too frequent yeah. for people to, to address things with St. Anselm. In the meantime, oh, that's when we had the idea of, well, doing other things besides just the conference. And one of those things was the the metaphysics colloquium. That so was so that emerged from, from that. That was just one of the ideas that was uh, mm -hmm. thrown out there. I didn't realize that the backstory extended so far that um, I mean it was ten years from originally starting to think about it to the first conference. Because mm -hmm. my my involvement right. began with that that first conference. Right. You know, I think with a lot of people. Well, I think it was beginning of collecting the books. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, Jim O'Rourke had. Um, uh, very important in organizing this and the inspiration and the, the funding for, for the Institute and for the collection. So he was involved earlier on. Uh, but I think people got together in committee and tried to figure out what can we do for the you know, centennial year, 2000, something on the inside yeah. would be good. And so that was the inspiration for getting uh, the con first conference going and then the Institute up and running with Father John. Yeah. Now I, uh, Professor Mon Monty Brown from, from the philosophy department, I've been involved in the beginning, not uh, on the committee, but I presented the first conference. And quite early, within the first maybe three or four years of the Institute, uh, we organized a satellite session in the fall. And it was at the PMR a couple of times, but mostly it's been at the American uh, Committee on Renaissance mm -hmm. Conference mm -hmm. in Villanova. Uh, the first couple of years it was there. Uh, and then it's really been at the American Catholic Philosophical Association meeting yeah, for the last years. many years. Present at, at, at yeah. those. And I was fairly mm -hmm. on. Father John asked me if I sort of organized that, so I, I started doing that when he was the director. Kept doing right. it while, while, while uh, Dwayne Bruce was the second director, and I still organize that. Yeah, you know, when I actually started charting it out, there's a lot of different moving parts to the, the Institute. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, I, I, there's the annual, not the annual, the, the triannual now conference, mm -hmm. the annual metaphysics colloquium, 
satellite session. So there's already three main scholars. Annual students of lecture. On that's right. Campus. That's true. Yeah. Every year we invite a scholar. Like it, right? Every year we invite a scholar to yeah. uh, to speak on some issue that's relevant to say not some studies to coincide typically with uh, the, the feast, feast day. Feast day. Yeah. yeah. This year is actually on the feast day. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. And then you guys have the St. Anselm Journal, which, yes, which ties all these things together. Do you want to? Yeah, is it, yeah the journal, uh, I think, is a, is, a, is a great opportunity for scholars. We, the the uh, inv invited papers that we, um, that we collect for the satellite session in the fall, but also for the metaphysical, we publish those. They are invited. Uh, and beyond that, um, if people submit, um, Papers, then we send them out to referees, double blind review, mm -hmm. and if, if we include those as well, if the if the uh, reviewers uh, think that's appropriate, and at least the last conference uh, we had in 2014 had some submissions which they also sent out to re referees, and we published some of those. Well, they're forthcoming actually in the next issue. Yeah, so it's, you can you can quite a resource. I right. know. Well, all the fruit of the labors of Father John Fortin, mm -hmm. uh, because he was the one who masterminded the idea of an online journal and saw it really? to completion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Yeah, he did a lot of work for the Sandy yeah, Institute. Yeah, he was a, a real workhorse. He's a very good medievalist. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Another day. Yeah. So there's there's all of that. Um, what else is is the institute involved in? Or actually, we should talk about the metaphysics club then, because mm -hmm. we haven't gotten to that, and that's sure. happening in a couple of days. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, again, that was one of the other things that came out early on. We were talking about different things the institute might uh, sponsor besides just a conference on St. Anselm. And so I had this idea of basically like a, a faith and reason program. Mm -hmm. But to begin with, um, because uh, Fides et Ratio, Faith and Reason by John Paul II had come out in 1998. Uh, this was a couple year, years later. And there in that letter, uh, he had spoken of the importance of a metaphysics for the contemporary age. That's true. That yeah. is, uh, the importance of philosophy and theology working together in order to explicate the faith and to present the faith. Yeah. Uh, to present the faith as something that, you know, is intelligible on its own terms. Um, and so I had the idea of, well, one of the things we might initially do would be to have this kind of a gathering where Catholic philosophers and theologians could come together and talk about essentially uh, the formation of a Catholic metaphysics. What would go into that? Now, you know, I have some background in philosophy, obviously, PhD in theology, so I didn't know where to start. So the first thing we did was we held a gathering, a one-day gathering. This, I think, was in 2002 to bring people together to brainstorm. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, we, in, uh, this was again Father John Fortin. He was great uh, you know, as, as a person who could organize things. He, he sent out flyers to all the you know, philosophy and theology departments in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. So he just blanketed yeah. uh, this, uh, this invitation to come to St. A's. We had at least 30, you know, perhaps more people who came. Uh, we had several folks from Boston College. Steve Brown was here. Father Matt Lamb, uh, who at that time was at BC, then went down to Ave Maria, but um, he came. A number of grad students showed up, and just about the entire Department of Philosophy from St. Anselm came. And um, I had asked Kevin Staley, a member of the Philosophy Department, who had been teaching a metaphysics course, if he would give a paper basically just on the state of metaphysics today. I mean, what do metaphysicians talk That's a about? Big topic. <laughs> exactly. He, he focused on what was of interest in him, which was basically the issue of time. But in any event, because uh, I just want to get an idea, okay, what do these folks think about? What are they talking about? Mm -hmm. And is there any kind of, you know, interface between what they're talking about and what might be of relevance to theology? Uh, and so Kevin gave the paper. We broke up into small group discussions, and people just brainstormed. And out of that came among mm -hmm. ideas that there would be an overnight affair. Uh, so okay. um, that we would have um, a single topic with a main paper on that topic and then respondents so that there would be essentially a two-day conversation. And that's how um, it was first pitched. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a workshop. Mm -hmm. So you have academics coming together and they're going to actually be 
kind of in a collaborative way, grappling with some particular problem in metaphysics that would relate to philosophy and theology, like substance. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can talk about substance in philosophy and transubstantiation uh, in theology. So these things that really would kind of be of mutual interest. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of clever because uh, one year you'd have a theologian be the main speaker, and a right. theologian and a philosopher oh, and commentaries. Uh, next year, a philosopher right. would be the main speaker with a theologian exactly. and a okay. philosopher com commentating. Exactly. So, now, over the years, it became more difficult <laughs> to find <laughs> theologians yes, right. you know, who were interested in talking about these things. But that was, Monty's mm -hmm. right, that was always the idea to, to have that back and forth. So there, there would be that parity, that, you know, that, that notion of real collaboration. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, just, it just took off from, from there. What has really been most attractive uh, has been the idea of it being overnight, mm -hmm. so that you have an ongoing conversation, and um, the idea of there being you know more coherence because typically you go to a conference right. and there are a bunch of different papers given by different people could be on a lot of different ideas. You listen to a paper and then everyone leaves, end of discussion, end of conversation. Yeah, people unless you like, pigeonhole the person. Yeah, people like yeah. the idea that, you know, you would have a conversation that would, that would go on. Everybody would be at all three papers. And then right. This conversation would go. Yeah, and then, you know, you guys supply the meals as well, and there's, yes. there's sort of a tradition of... Um, well, the meal time is a good time for yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, well, but also that at night, there's the sitting around and chatting in the lounge and right. catching up with each other. I think there's there's sort of a community that has developed out of this, you know, people look forward to going to this each year. I know I certainly do. Yeah. Um, so, so that's what we do uh, here at St. Anselm. The satellite session is focused really more on the historical St. Anselm. Yeah. Sometimes papers on his own work, mm -hmm. but also some of his predecessors, Augustine, Aquinas, who are some of his influences. Mm -hmm. So um, that is the more historically based. So Anselm always features directly in that conversation, and sometimes all on Anselm, and some sometimes will be on Anselm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this year we're doing Augustine, Anselm, and Aquinas on, on heaven and hell. So it's a kind of mm -hmm. interesting question. Okay. And the first three, th first four of the conferences were mostly on the historical Anselm. And that's so true. Yeah. With the last one, we thought, well, it's just hard to get that many people working on, on that on that historical. Uh, Material. So this year, last time we did it was, was on church and state, mm -hmm. which is obviously an idea that's very important for Anselm. Mm -hmm. I think that's our, our idea in the future. Mm -hmm. A little bit larger topic that can field both historical stuff on Anselm, but also right. systematic questions and faith and reason. And yeah, and there were other people presenting on um, thinkers other than, than Anselm, um, usually in panels that, mm -hmm. that included one paper on Anselm. Right. So it was a very successful conference, I thought. Um, do you guys have the, the theme yet for the the next one? No, we really don't. Yeah, we, have, we have kicking it out. Yes, we, we will. We will have that in place uh, certainly by early next year because we want to give a full year to roll this out in terms of advertising it. And what's kind of neat too um, with the conference is that, uh, of course, San Anselm College is a small college, it's an undergraduate college, and we always try to focus on uh, fostering this kind of interest and work on the part of undergraduates. Yeah. And so, yes, you know, you, you have your, uh, your main attendees who are academicians, they're already well known in the field, and you'll have graduate students in addition. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, we always have an undergraduate panel. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there'll be students from St. Anselm, but, you know, from other schools, too, in the area. Gordon Massachusetts. College Assumption, we had them there. Well, no, conference. they'll come and they'll give papers. And it's a great experience for them to be in an academic conference and to have uh, professionals in the audience who respond to them, give them feedback on their papers. From the very beginning, we've always had that undergraduate component, too, which yeah, I think, I think is, is unusual. And it's, and it's very important. Um, you know, the... The plenary lectures for the conference are always very well attended by St. Anselm undergraduates. Mm -hmm. right? Um, and you see some of them, too, in the, mm -hmm. the panel uh, discussions in the mm -hmm. audience. Right? So typically, I know one year we did have two plenary speakers. We've done that in the past, some of the conferences. The last one, we just had mm -hmm. one plenary speaker, uh, right. Robert George from Princeton, right. who uh, gave the Anselm address and the, the, the conference uh, talk with the same that year. Oh, happened the okay. Same way. Yeah. So um, let me ask you a couple other questions. Um, 
what would this is an open ended one? What would you say the 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 purpose and the contribution of, of the institute is to Anselm scholarship? For you know people who don't really know, put it in terms for people who don't actually understand necessarily what academics are up to. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think the fact that we invite uh, people to these two uh, sessions, the one the historical session, one the metaphysical session, uh, gives people an opportunity to work on material um, with support and mm -hmm. knowing that what they do will uh, see the light of day. Mm -hmm. It's kind of publication. Yeah, that's important. And I think people like that. And, and, and also, we can therefore choose topics that we think are really important, not just what the journals that happen to be out, other journals might mm -hmm. want to accept. Uh, we can uh, steer some important research on, on topics, particularly topics which we think are very important and close to St. Anselm's part of faith and reason. So, you know, it's not just philosophy, it's not just theology, it's, it's not just those two, it's also history and his, his work as a, as a bishop and archbishop. And, so it's wide ranging and it helps uh, those things support uh, in an active way uh, ideas and, and com comments on Anselm and the tradition. This is also a, an incredible support, though. Yes. A special collection. collection. Well, yeah, and, and just maybe a few words about that. Uh, this special collection that we have here, uh, we're, we're trying to get everything on Anselm here, and we're reasonably close to it, probably have a better collection than, than, than exists anywhere else. Yeah. And that goes back to 1990 when uh, Professor Kevin Staley, philosophy department, got a summer research grant to, to work on updating the kind of bibliography and, and to look at what papers have been done. And since that time, we've been trying to collect mm -hmm. uh, uh, all, all the books on Anselm and uh, we've a bunch of dissertations that you've been working yeah. on. Yeah, uh, there's quite a few. Well, that's one of the piece, too, of, of the original plan, yeah. at least from yeah. Father, uh, Father John, is that we would have a, a scholar on occasion come to St. Anselm. And uh, Greg Haplow did that in the, in the initial time, and then we had some work here that needed to be done on our collection, and he volunteered uh, to come back uh, this summer to work on that. Yeah. But I think we'd like to get that, if not every summer, at least every other summer, right. and maybe maybe target, uh, you asked me a question, how we're trying to uh, foster uh, future growth mm -hmm. in the scholarship, uh, graduate students. I think uh, that's a great idea. ABDs that are working mm -hmm. on their dissertation and then they come and yeah. spend a week or so here. There's so many things in the, the collection here that I wouldn't even have known existed if I didn't have the opportunity. There's, you know, you can get things online, mm -hmm. but actually being able to hold books in your hand and then right. like pour through them um, and, and, and read in, in this isn't quite stacks, but it's, it's, it's like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's invaluable for, for yeah. scholarship because you just don't know until you actually go to it what there is. And some of those dissertations, you know, the, the authors, a lot of them are actually um, authors who were religious mm -hmm. and they didn't publish them because they were right. particularly interested in, you yeah. know, furthering their, their academic career. And, right. and there's some great stuff in there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there's also some things that aren't Ansel related. That are really interesting mm -hmm. as well for medievalists. And may, maybe because we have other outreach ideas in mind for the institute too, not just for scholars I'd love themselves, to but those. you know some of the things that, you know, we talked about. Well, I mean, certainly, uh, what academics do should really be thinking about the stuff formally that is relevant to anybody. Yeah, I mean, thinking about stuff that anyone would think about, maybe thinking about at greater length if he or she had more time to think about that stuff, but you know. They don't, but academics do. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, when you're talking about an institute like this that fosters that kind of study and reflection on the part of academics or professionals, their own work can actually be a kind of yeast, a leaven for uh, reflection of just ordinary people. Um, and as Monty is saying, um, the institute is looking to expressly, not just kind of like in that indirect way, by fostering the, the work of professionals, but then having programs mm -hmm. uh, itself that will uh, draw non-professionals. But, but people who are still interested in these sorts of questions, I can remember uh, years ago, uh, Kevin Staley got an uh, NEH grant to uh, put together a colloquium uh, whose central text was Zen and the art oh, of yeah. motorcycle repair. Yeah, maintenance. Yeah, but, yeah maintenance. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, that's all about, uh, you know, I guess you could say, the sorts of philosophical type questions that a non-professional would, would ask. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I think it was designed for high school teachers. It was, and I, so I think that's an idea we have in mind is to reach out not only to the yeah, and really foster the real the cutting edge of scholarship and faith and reason questions, but also spread it around. Uh, I mean, they, they love that opportunity to come yeah. together and to talk, you know, about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in an environment that was a formal environment, but it wasn't one that was. You know, so sophisticated that you know it was just too that technical. Was or, yeah. Exactly, and, uh, and we're hoping that the institute can do more things along those lines for a more general audience. That sounds wonderful. And hope hope that uh, what it is the professionals do uh, under the aegis of the institute can can actually augment that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you do have that reciprocity. I think a lot of people don't really when they think about Anselm, they think about this guy who you know wrote these books and. And they may have a few things in mind about, you know, having to deal with church-state controversies. But they mm -hmm. forget he was a, essentially a professional. Once he mm -hmm. became prior mm -hmm. in the monastery, he was in a teaching role. And they had right. to teach these guys right. you know, from the ground up and, and do some... Actually, because his abbot was ill, he had to do a lot of the administrative work. And then right. they made... Poor guy, they made him abbot. And then he had even more. And then kicking and screaming, they made him... Archbishop, and then it was right. work, you know, from sun up to sun down. Yeah. Yeah. He was the second true. Archbishop of Canterbury after after Lanfranc was, was the first. So William brought Lanfranc over, and then yeah, his son brought Anselm. Who unfortunately seems to have established a few precedents. Yeah. <laughs> but I think Saint Anselm is a great figure uh, for scholarship because uh, he's a brilliant thinker. So yeah. that's philosopher and mm -hmm. theologian. Mm -hmm. But he's also a very great teacher. Uh, an able administrator. He dealt with kings and popes and stuff uh, and tried mm -hmm. to deal with that. So, man of many talents. And uh, his, his meditations and prayers are just yeah, beautiful, beautiful spiritual. Beautiful, right? beautiful mm -hmm. spiritual thinker. Yeah. That was actually the question I was going to ask, uh, uh, sort of to, to bring things to a close. Why is it important to study Anselm? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, I think he's uh, such a pivotal, pivotal figure. And he's very, you know, if you asked him, you know, Who's your influence? Well, it's Augustine. I'm just, yeah, I, never, I don't say anything that Augustine didn't say. Of course, he does say a few things that Augustine didn't say, but <laughs> he's really building on that. So the whole the whole tradition of faith and reason is so mm -hmm. important. And then it, it goes from him, obviously, to Thomas Aquinas and Newman and, and mm -hmm. John Paul and you know, mm -hmm. the whole church intellectual tradition. So he's very pivot, pivotal that way. Uh, and to me, I uh, just gave a paper at St. Vincent's Abbey, which is the mother house of St. Anselm on uh, the faith and reason question. And Anselm, is, he's just so convinced in the goodness of reason. You know, there's yeah. no place where you say, no more for reason. Mm -hmm. Reason, no. If, if you mm -hmm. have the reasons, you express them. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, without the faith, we, we uh, probably lose our focus um, in terms of humility and a love for the truth for its own sake. Yeah, uh, that's dangerous. So we, we really need both of them, and both full throttle for him. I mean, mm -hmm. There's no, there's no uh, um, magic dividing line where uh, where faith can't go beyond that, and reason can't go the other way. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's the whole human being thinking about uh, everything that's important. What do you think, Kevin? Well, I think that's yeah. true. I think that uh, you know, um, if you're just talking about the nature of theology, theology is a questioning discipline. It's all about asking questions. Now, of course, <laughs> there's a sense in which the answers are there, yeah. the faith. But uh, theology is always asking questions about the faith. I mean, you're making this claim. How does that make sense? Or how do you fit this claim in with this claim? You know, a triune God with the incarnation, or the incarnation with the resurrection of the body. Assuming that it all forms a, a single coherent whole, that's the answer. But the, the, the devout person, the curious person, can't help but ask questions about yeah. that. And, you know, you can ask questions that get you into all kinds of trouble. But the importance, as Monty was saying about Anselm, first of all, confidence in reason at actually being able to ask the right questions and arrive at uh, workable uh, answers to those questions put to the faith. And also the willingness to take a risk. If you have that kind of confidence and reason, you've got to be willing to put out those questions, even if, in fact, they might go off in bad directions. Nonetheless, you say, okay, that was a bad question, or it might, in fact, lead to a complete misunderstanding. The answer is not to stop asking the questions. 
The answer is okay, then let's ask different questions yeah. that can show how it is that that particular line is a mistaken line. And so if we go back to John Paul and Fidesz Ratio, the idea of a metaphysics that's about everything, that is faith and reason too. So mm -hmm. metaphysics mm -hmm. isn't just a philosophical discipline. And the greatest of the met metaphysicians, Plato and Aristotle, are open-ended. I mean, they, yeah. they don't close down at the end. Yeah. And so their methods are very suitable, I and mean, of course Anselm mm -hmm. and, and maybe Thomas more for Aristotle, make use of those methods in trying to understand the faith. And it's a very rich uh, meeting of the two traditions. Yeah. Well, so to come back to the, the Institute for a close, it seems like, you know, it's, it's going along very well. It's very robust. You guys have a lot of interesting projects going on. And so uh, I'm, you know, for myself, I'm very happy to see that coming in from, from the outside and benefiting from mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, structure that you guys have created. Right. Yeah. And I, I think it, I think it is healthy and we're trying to, to manage all these different pieces of it, uh, not to lose uh, the, the metaphysics cloak we may morph a little bit into something a bit more general. It is this year it's on, on what Catholicism are in beauty, right. which mm -hmm. is related certainly. Um, but we want to also keep the idea of that workshop on some of those really tough questions with mm -hmm. a fairly small group. How did that happen? And uh, the other side of things, maybe things for the diocese, maybe things for the high school teachers that uh, open up what we're doing to other people without the same kind of training, yeah. professional training. Well, so thanks great. for uh, coming thanks for in having us. The interview. Yeah, thanks. thanks for your continued yeah, yeah. interest yeah. in the institute. You've been a great supporter. Oh, we appreciate it. Exactly, Craig. Yeah, thanks. thanks. So I'm here with, with Jim O'Rourke, somebody who's been very uh, central to the beginnings and the ongoing operations of the Institute for St. Anselm Studies. Very happy to have him here because I can get a lot of the backstory happy from you. here. Um, thanks. Yeah, so um, I mean, one thing we ought to start off by talking about, it's the O'Rourke Collection the, in the Geisel Library. So how did that come about? Well, I... Uh, it began in 1990, approximately. Uh, we were talking about the uh, the development of the college. I believe this was spurred on by uh, a celebration, our mm -hmm. Sesqui Millennial Celebration. Of, uh, I believe it's the birth, the birth or the death of Saint Anselm. Birth of Saint Anselm. Yeah. In any case, <clears throat> uh, we were thinking about the college, and it occurred to me that uh, from uh, that we ought to specialize, so to speak, in the thought of Saint Anselm. Uh, that we are Saint Anselm College. We're the only college named after Saint Anselm. Uh, in the United States, uh, there are a few in the world. There's uh, yeah. obviously one in Rome, and I think there's another in Europe. And uh, it occurred to me that we ought to have the resources to uh, for a complete, uh, thorough study of San Francisco. And uh, at the time, our library, I believe, only had two special collections. One of them was a collection in New England books. I, I don't know what the other one was right now. Uh, but the idea occurred to me that we could develop a collection of works uh, by and on St. Anselm that would be relatively complete. Um, and for several reasons. Uh, our library is not a huge research library. Yeah. And so we have limited, we have limited space and limited resources. Uh, Saint Anselm himself did write, not write a lot of works. You could uh, get all of his works in a, in, a, in a single volume, maybe a couple inches thick. And the writings on Saint Anselm would be of an extent such that we could reasonably expect to acquire them for the uh, for the college collection. Uh, we could not have done the same thing, say, uh, on St. Anselm, on St. Thomas Aquinas, <clears throat> to have a collection, a complete collection of works by and on St. Thomas Aquinas would be out of the reach of our library. Yeah. 
So, uh, first of all, it was appropriate to have such a collection because of the name of the college. And secondly, it was within reach um, because of the scope of works on St. Anselm. And thirdly, uh, what St. Anselm wrote, thought about, and wrote about um, were related in a very intimate way to what the college uh, affirmed as its goals, if you wish, as, as the way of implementing its mission. Uh, St. Anselm famously discusses the great existential questions of human life, the nature of human freedom, uh, God, evil, and sin, and the devil, and so forth. Okay? And uh, those key questions, at that time at least, formed the center of our core curriculum in philosophy and theology. Uh, and so it, it was appropriate, again, in a different way, for us to focus on St. Anselm. Yeah. And finally, there was a fourth reason we did this. We had the personnel. We had several people who were involved in uh, uh, media philosophy and theology. Uh, uh, Kevin Staley, for example, Monty Brown. Uh, we had a father, Anselm, at the time. Oh. Uh, was he involved and, in the... Not really. No. Okay. But, but, and of course, we have the presence of the monastic community, right? yeah. so it's obviously the Benedictine tradition. Uh, Kevin Staley uh, started us off by uh, developing a bibliography with a summer research grant, a bibliography of uh, writings on St. Anselm, mostly writings in philosophy by philosophers and theologians, okay? and that formed the basis uh, for the collection. So then you and then later, you know, later we acquired those works first, and then we later uh, adopted the bibli a bibliography by uh, Kinsler, Kinsler uh, which which now I think we just about uh, completed acquiring. Okay. Um, but the the original impetus was to develop a collection in the library. Okay. Yeah. It was not the form of an institute. The institute, That's what I was wondering the institute so. uh, was founded almost 10 years after the collection. The collection. We had the idea for the collection. Okay. But I distinctly remember uh, the excitement that we had. I was sitting in my office thinking about the college and its resources. I had the idea of developing a, a collection of books on St. Anselm. And I thought it was a great idea, so I walked over to Kevin Staley's office, and he was there, and Father John Fortin was there, and I said, what do you think of this? And within uh, a week, we had a kind of uh, plan for the collection of uh, first works uh, by St. Anselm, the sources of St. Anselm, of uh, works on philosophy and theology, works on the era of St. Anselm, culture, culture, culture yeah, and so yeah. forth. Okay. In, in a way, uh, constructing the collection as, as a series of concentric circles okay, around the works of St. Anselm. That and makes himself. sense, yeah. okay. But then it, it was, uh, I think, closer to the year 2000 uh, that we, we established the Institute. Father John Fortin was instrumental in that. Yeah. I mean, he, he uh, wanted to do it. We put together a committee, which I chaired, yeah. and uh, I argued it before the curriculum committee and took it to the. Uh, that sort of advocacy work. Not, the, not the governing board at that point. It was already, I think, a, um, a lay board, the board of trustees. Okay. So I, I made the presentation to the lay board of trustees, and they approved it, and uh, I started holding conferences. Yeah. And so far, we've had quite a few. Yeah, five so far, right? Is it five? five? Is it five? So. Well, you know better than I do. That's yeah, I, 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 I didn't miss one. Okay. But, um, you know, I my my beginning. And, is, and then, if we just continue, just to get the big, the big picture, Kevin McMahon, Professor Kevin McMahon, was the uh, was the author of the Metaphysics Colloquium. That was his right, idea yeah. to have the Metaphysics Colloquium. So now we have three kind of regular events, the, the uh, uh, conference, 
and then we have usually a panel at the uh, American Catholic Philosophical Association meeting, uh, and then thirdly we have the Metaphysics Colloquium that we're Which engaged right in now, yeah. right now. You know, yeah. uh, and, and then we added to that the Anselm lecture once a year. There's a lecture That's on right. some aspect yeah. of Saint Anselm uh, that also preceded the Anselm Institute. Oh, that actually I was, didn't know that. Yeah, that, I think that was the second thing that occurred after the collection. After we started working, with the but collection. it was tied in with the, the project yeah. of the collection. No, it was just it, it, it seems like something that supported. It just fit. Okay. Because in those days we were establishing uh, funds for lecture series. Okay. You may remember Olaf Tolleson. Yeah. Okay, we, we established an Olaf Tolleson lecture fund to have one a one lecture a year in honor of Olaf Tolleson. Um, there, I think, were, were other lecture funds uh, established in those years at the college, but we thought it would be appropriate to have a lecture on St. Anselm once a year. Uh, yeah. So we set up a fund and got funding for it and so forth. And, and then, so those two events came first, and then the Anselm Institute uh, was established, which then s sponsored the the second conference. I believe the first conference was run uh, before the institute was approved. Oh, the first conference we had. Yes, interesting. It was but the, the nucleus first, was there. The right? first, the first conference was organized by the librarian and Father John Fortin and uh, myself and others. Have, you know, it, yeah. it was it was kind of a what can I say, seat of the pants thing. Really. And I was there for that. And, were you? And it's, okay. it's, it was very well run. You know, it, 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 to be sure about this, yeah. but I'd have to look at my records. That's, uh, you know, what, 30, 20 years ago? 15. 92, 202, right. that's 20, 20. The 2000, the first 23 was, years ago. So this whole thing started at least 23 years ago. Yeah. It's been a long time. Yeah. Um, it's a fascinating story. You know, the more that I, I dig, the more threads I'm finding. Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of what you could call it, um, an end user of the <coughs> Institute. You know, I've come here to study, sure. uh, two trips, I've gone to the conferences. So I get to see the, 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 the facade. I don't see the, the right. guts of the operation. And it's, it's really interesting to find out how much was involved and how far back the, the plans went. Um, I do have to say, too, that the collection is... Really extraordinary. It's a, a very helpful resource for anybody who wants to do mm -hmm. serious study on Anselm. To have all these things in one place and to be able to, you know, instead of looking at them on a screen, hold mm -hmm. them in your hands and do work with it is invaluable. I know I couldn't do some of the work that I've done without it. Like so, oh, thanks for, going along is for all that work. We're, we're catching up. We're, we're right there with you. We and, up. and then we thought that no, I think, I think you're uh, well, the collection here. should contain no, no. at least no, no. one no, no. old no, book or antique book. What has more than one? We, we looked for uh, <laughs> actually we looked for a manuscript. Oh, the courteous old one. And. Uh, yeah. And we could not find an appropriate manuscript of a work by St. Anselm. I mean, they're, they're very rare. Uh, but we did finally locate a first edition yeah. of the Cur Deus Homo, which was published in the 15th century. Uh, published in uh, 1474. Uh, it's... I believe uh, Cordelius Homo is the first book printed, uh, first book by St. Anselm printed. The, uh, I believe there's a collection of writings of St. Anselm that were printed pre prior to the Cordelius Homo. Okay. But Cordelius Homo is the first separate single, work, separate yeah. single work uh, that was printed after the discovery of the printing press. And we, we found that, we purchased that, and, and it's now in the yeah, it's, it's a beautiful volume. Institute Library. It's in the Institute Library. Yeah. It's kind of neat. I see it every day as I handle, handle mm -hmm. something that's you know, 500 years old. I haven't taken it out to take a look at that. Make sure you use, you use gloves when you're Yeah, gloves, absolutely. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't come in with the hammer. Uh, <laughs> 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 
But that wasn't acquired until, what, about five years ago, I think? Um, okay. About five years ago. So. I don't know how you get a phone. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, is there anything else that you'd what, like to say about the Institute? Or well, plans? It's been, it, not really. Not, uh, now it's under the able direction of Marty Brown. And uh, one of the things the Institute hopes to do is to expand its, its clientele, so to speak, yeah. uh, beyond uh, philosophers and theologians, especially philosophers interested in the ontological argument and <laughs> theologians interested in the Kurt Anselm. <laughs> <from, laughs> <my Kurt is, laughs> yeah. uh, because Anselm's work uh, does have ramifications in other areas, in, in, in education, in uh, particularly the relationship between church and state, uh, in theology in general, in spirituality. Yeah. And we're hoping that the Institute will attract people who are interested in looking at these more, more general, if you wish, areas so that it doesn't, uh, so they will encourage work in areas that St. Anselm was interested in, but not necessarily by by working with and some texts all the time. Yeah. Well, you know, according to Adler, he was a great spiritual director yes. who would, you know, relate to just about anybody he came across. And people sought him out for his uh, his counsel. Yeah. So it sounds entirely appropriate yeah. to me. Yeah. 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 Very well. So. Good. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, great. thank you. So I'm very happy to have here uh, Father John Fortin, who was the first director of the Institute for St. Anselm Studies, uh, very instrumental in many ways behind the scenes, um, even down to the present, right? I think you can safely say that still. Not so much, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, very important in the, the origins of the Institute as well. Mm -hmm. So I figure I could get a lot of backstory from you and then hear about, okay. you know, the early years and, yeah. and uh, all the different things that were, were going on. Okay. So, um, do you want to start with, with um, you know, the, the sort of the backstory? I know that sure. uh, Kevin Staley did that bibliography, and, and Jim O'Rourke was involved early on. Well, the, the uh, this all started uh, long before the institute was even conceived of, with with the Saint Anselm Studies Collection, which was a uh, started with a gift from the O'Rourke family, a financial gift, to uh, start collecting books about Saint Anselm. Uh, books and articles and whatever we could find, uh, collections of his printed works. Uh, even thought at some point we'd start looking for manuscripts if we could ever afford it. Uh, so I I can't remember exactly when that started. I believe that was in the 80s, sometime in the 80s, when that project started. Uh, Jim was involved. I was asked to be involved. Kevin Staley was involved. Father Joe Berthold, uh, when he was on the theology faculty, was involved. And I think Father Placidus Riley. Okay. Former president of the college were also involved in that project. Um, Kevin got a summer research grant, I believe, which enabled him to pull a, a pretty substantial bibliography together. So that was all going on. It was part of the library's collection. Uh, what happened uh, with the Institute was uh, in 1999, uh, there were a group of faculty having lunch in the coffee shop. And as happens sometimes at faculty tables, mm -hmm. uh, there was a bit of uh, concern about what the college was going to do for the uh, millennial celebration. Yeah. Uh, and it was suggested by someone at the table, and I don't remember who. <laughs> uh, it wasn't me, although I was there. Uh, why don't we do a conference on St. Anselm? We've never done anything like that. We did a conference on St. Benedict for the college's 100th anniversary. Oh. In 1889, in 1999, yeah. so 1989, 1999, there was a, a big conference on, on uh, St. Benedict, uh, which might have included St. Anselm in it, actually. So uh, a group of us uh, volunteered to get together and, and get the idea going, and I missed the first meeting, so I be, was made chairman. <laughs> That's so what I usually Those goes. things happen. Yeah. Uh, so we uh, arranged this conference, and uh, we got uh, G.R. Evans from England to come mm -hmm. over to be the uh, uh, give the keynote address. We had, I can't remember exactly now, but probably 35 or 40 papers 
we had uh, uh, one session for undergraduate students mm -hmm. to give papers. Um, it was a it was a pretty good pretty good weekend. Uh, a lot of good. A lot of the good reception was here in the library, as I remember. Uh, not for that first one. Was that the second? Oh yes, one? no, we did. We did Friday evening after the keynote address. We came. They, uh, the uh, head librarian was on the committee. Yeah. So he agreed to close the library. It was a Friday evening. They didn't get a lot of business anyway, being an undergraduate college. So closed it. We had the reception, reception here. We had other meals, I think, down in the dining hall, and we had most of the uh, sessions in the student center. Uh, no, this wasn't rooms. here yet at that point, right? This room was here, but it was the access to the attic. Okay. And it was a general storage room. They just threw stuff in here. Yeah. There was nothing. There was no. There was no window. That was just a. Full door. There was no window in the door or anything like that. Was it the second conference or the third conference then when they took people on a tour of the Well, the um, what happened was uh, at the end of that conference, there were a lot of people that approached me who asked if this was going to happen again because they enjoyed yeah. it. So I kind of thought, yeah, it would be kind of a shame to lose this. So I wrote up a proposal to start an institute for St. Anselm Studies. Uh, this is the only St. Anselm College in the Western Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. We had the St. Anselm Studies collection already started, uh, and it seemed like a natural, a natural setting. So I put yeah. a proposal together, uh, which I then uh, presented to the dean, and I can't remember the exact process, but it wound up with the governing board of the college. I happened to be a member of the governing board at the time, <laughs> so I didn't. I recused myself from the vote, but I, I was certainly pushed it. We had just started uh, the, the Institute of Politics, the New Hampshire Institute of Politics, the same that same time, and um, so there were certain conditions that were set, and but it got approved. So um, we started, and we set up a, a committee here on campus to kind of be a, an advisory committee to the director. I had someone else in mind to be the director and was astounded when the person said no. Who, who was it? Well, I don't want to say. Oh, okay. It. And then, so I, by default, I wound up being the director. So um, in working with the committee and then with the librarian, he said, well, I've got a room that's not being used. We could always fix it up. Oh. So working with our physical plant people did all these bookshelves. Yeah. Um, this is designed on some room down at, I believe, at Boston College which okay. is where our head librarian was working on his doctorate, um, which didn't bother me. I didn't care about that part. Um, a couple of us went out furniture shopping and found the I heard you shares. commissioned these. Uh, is that true? No, we found them. Okay. Yeah. we But we didn't find them in the same place. We found the chairs in one place and the table someplace else. Ah. Uh, we had a computer, kind of a student computer set up in here. Mm -hmm. um, so we got, we got a sign on the door. I got a couple of pieces of art. Um, and uh, put in a new door with windows. And the idea was that although it wouldn't be uh, open during the day, uh, there would be times when it would be accessible. So, for example, I've had class in here. Oh, really? I ran a class in here at a small seminar. I had about six students, so we met in here. Yeah. And that was nice because people could see that the room was being used. So that was in uh, uh, 2001 mm -hmm. that the Institute was approved and this started up. And then so... The next conference, I think, was in 2002. That, that's and, right. Yeah. And that's when this was ready. So part of, the, part of what we did at that point was to dedicate, dedicate this place, or at least open it up and let people, yeah. let people see it. Um, uh, There's another one in 2004, right? Yeah, we did another one in 2004. Um, and then um, I think we were planning another one. We decided to wait, put it off for a while. Yeah. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't want to push it too much. Uh, in the meantime, we had a number of other projects going. Uh, from the first conference, we edited papers from that and published that. Uh, we started an online journal. That's right. And yeah. some studies. Uh, again, the head librarian, the tech person from the library, and I went up to Dartmouth to talk to the people. They had an online journal, uh, gave us all kinds of advice, and we came back and basically designed. And yeah, there weren't that many here. online journals. That was that, at that was time. fairly new. Yeah, and, and yours and a lot of the online journals that were available, they they very much look just like web pages. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the Saint Anselm Journal from the start has had a really distinctive aesthetic mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, 
We also set up, um, I, don't, I can't remember what we call it, but it's a, 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 a council of some sort of people not here, but who had some fairly significant names in the world of philosophy and theology and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know that that's been changed much. I mean, Ralph McEnany was originally one of the people. He has since passed away. I don't know if they've replaced, kind of replaced that or done anything with that. But that was another thing we did. We did... Um, uh, I was available to give retreats based on the teachings of St. Anselm, and I did a couple of those. I uh, offered to the Alumni Association to make myself available to give talks to alumni groups about Anselm. Uh, we did a, a, a booklet for Lent. I remember that, yeah. Uh, and that sold out, it's and we useful. did it and um, with new drawings from Father Ian, one of the monks. did all the drawings for that, so we've had a second edition of that come out. But a new, improved. Yeah. Um, um, and there were, um, we uh, uh, sponsored uh, sessions at the American Catholic Philosophical Association um, annual conference. Mm -hmm. um, I was hoping at some point to get to some other conferences. Um, the Patristic Medieval and Renaissance Conference in Monova was one that kind of changed. A bit, so we never got involved in that. I was hoping to get something going with Leeds over in Leeds as oh. an annual medieval conference and yeah. try to do something there. Um, Sometimes there's things with um, <coughs> the Kalamazoo conference, aren't there? Uh, <coughs> or we uh, that was one of the places we were going to look at eventually to go to go to. I'm you know we went up to that. Uh, yeah. I'm not a big fan of the Kalamazoo conference because it's just too many people. Yeah, it's just it's just too big, but. Maybe at some point the, the Institute will, will move in that direction. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the... I, I remember distinctly that I listed 14 things that the Institute could be doing. But, uh, wow. You know, that was 14 years ago, 15 years ago when I put that, put that all together. Well, I think it took having somebody... And I'm, I'm going to sort of, you know, praise you here. It's not oh. flattery. Uh, mm -hmm. But you're, you're a very dynamic uh, administrator you get things done. You have you you're, you're, you have a great imagination for what could could be the case. Mm -hmm. And I think if it, if the institute didn't have somebody like you at the start, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have grown like yeah. it did. You well, know? we we did we did all right. We had um, we got some trustees interested who were very generous. Um, one of the other programs was um, you no know, set up a program for a graduate for a graduate student who was working on Anselm to do a summer internship here. Uh, I don't know that that ever got off the ground or hasn't gotten off the ground yet is what I should say. Yeah. All those things are still possibilities. Well, you know, the summer of... research residency that, that yeah. I did this summer, the mm. just ending now, and then mm. I did one in 2009. I think right. that was part yeah. of it. But now the plan is for it to be ABD yeah. grad students. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's going forward. Yeah. So there's, there, there were a lot of things. So I, I basically started with the program in 2001, and then in 2007, I finally got a sabbatical. So, I remember that, yeah, so, Notre Dame. Yeah, at Notre Dame as a visiting scholar. Um, so um, it was decided that, and, and also one of the things that was going on at that time is that the, the director of the institute reported to the executive vice president, which meant that the institute's activities got into the vice president's report to the trustees. Okay. So they were always aware of, at least at the, the, the meetings, Yeah. they had a report on what was going on here. Uh, so the, the institute was handed over to another person when I went off on sabbatical. Um, and there was some change in the administration, so uh, it reported to the dean of the college from that point on. And um, I don't think it quite got the publicity that it had been getting yeah. and previously. And then so uh, Dwayne Bruce was the second director. He was the associate dean of the college. He did it for a number of years. He retired. And now Monty Brown, who was uh, uh, in the philosophy department, is, uh, is, uh, is running it. And uh, Dwayne had at least one conference. Yeah, uh, I think that's, that's, that's right. Yeah. And then there was another one a couple of years ago. And I, I presented at that. Then there was another one a couple of years ago. But... Um, since uh, 2013, I have not been on the faculty. I've uh, That's right. taken a position uh, 
I'm on loan to the diocese for three years. You got kind of kicked upstairs in well, certain ways, right? Maybe. Uh, so I'm on loan for the diocese That's the for three years. perils of being a, an able administrator. Well, yeah. <laughs> so I haven't been in, uh, that much involved. I, I just, I got back from something and came in for the last two minutes of the last talk of the, yeah. of the last conference. The other thing that we, that has been going on too, fairly regularly, um, that was Kevin McMahon's idea was the uh, metaphysics colloquium. Yeah. Based on the, the Holy Father, uh, John Paul II's idea about philosophers and theologians getting together to talk about salient issues. So we started that. That's a summer. Uh, that's a wonderful program. I think it's a, it's, it's a simple overnight. Um, it's free for the participants. We provide room and board. Um, it started out with, um, getting a main speaker with, uh, two responders, uh, and then, uh, basically having it as a colloquium. So mm -hmm. we wanted to keep it fairly small and normally we didn't, we wouldn't get more than 15, 20 people, which was just what we wanted. So we would advertise it to philosophy and theology departments of Catholic colleges in New England. Mm -hmm. And we had a regular crowd that used to come. And then we had every once in a while, somebody new would come, um, uh, to the program. So that, that was done and has been going on every summer, I think. Yeah, it uh, is. For a number of years now. Um, and the topics change and vary. And, uh, you know, a program like that takes on a life of its own. So the initial idea might change. The idea was to have uh, a theologian give a presentation, have a philosopher theologian response. And the next time would be a philosopher give the main, mm -hmm. then a philosopher theologian respond. And then, but that, that has changed, which is great. Uh, but this was. This was uh, Kevin McMahon said, why don't we think about doing something like that? And then it was, it was not hard to arrange. Um, and you know, the cost was not, the cost was not that great. The college is very, yeah. very generous, uh, in that regard to me. So, um, so that's another program that, that that's been going on. So. so that leads to something I was, I was hoping <clears throat> to get, this is, this is, uh, interviews for, a lot of people who aren't in an academic situation so they can get an understanding of what goes on yeah. to put together an academic conference. That's a big mm -hmm. production, especially the first time yeah. that it happens. And yeah. that first St. Anselm conference mm -hmm. was really extraordinary yeah. as, as somebody who went to it. Yeah. So can you tell people a little bit about what goes into, you know, some of, you know, not, not in yeah. great detail, but so just give an idea of the magnitude of planning that has to go. Well, these we, things. again, for that first one, uh, that was pre-institute, uh, but as a group of people, we had all been to professional conferences. Mm -hmm. So we sat down, we, we just, we came upon a theme. Um, um, I think it was St. Anselm, his, his life and influence. His influences and yeah. uh, something. Uh, yeah. But, but we came up, came across the theme. So then we uh, advertised, uh, put word out, uh, advertised as, as widely as we could. Today that would be all internet for the most part. Yeah. I mean, and you today we've got a mailing list too. I Back mean, then it was a bulletin board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we sent out notices all over the place. I think we sent to we got the mailing list from when they had the the press conference um, for the centennial. We still had the mailing list for wow. colleges, so we, we, the library loaned me one of the administrative assistants, kind of as a half time, went through that and uh, see whatever we could update, but addressed it to the chairs of philosophy and chairs of theology, and chairs of history departments. Yeah. To all the Catholic colleges in the country and a few other places. Yeah, I'm fortunate actually yeah. that you guys sent one to yeah. Southern Illinois University yeah. because otherwise I had never heard of it. Yeah. Nobody was doing the answer. So it was, there was paper. Paper uh, thing we sent out, and then we we talked about who we might get mm -hmm. for speaker. And I said, "Gee, you know, wouldn't it be great to get Jill Evans uh, or uh, you know somebody of that caliber?" And I said, "Gee, I don't know." So I said, I asked one of the other members of the committee, "Would you write the letter mm -hmm. on behalf of the group?" And he would, and she responded, "She'd be delighted to come." So uh, I took it from there with the uh, administrative assistant, we made all the arrangements. Uh, she was delightful. She was wonderful to have. And we got all these people. So the first time I met Kate Rogers, uh, the first time I met you, yeah. uh, met a number of people who've been very, um, very close to the school and have been regularly participating in our programs, not only in the conferences here or the colloquia here, uh, but in giving papers at the uh, ACPA or yeah. some of those other things. Um, 
So we, um, so we did that. And then I just, I mean, I'm a list guy. I mean, so I just sat down and said, if I'm going to bring all these people here, where would they need to go and how would I get them there? That's right. It was at so, that, um, that hotel where I well, guess the, um, there was a big local history with that. That, that was where the, a lot of the reporters for the uh, yes. St. Anselm Institute, or not, the, 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 the Institute well, of Politics. Well, they, that wasn't yeah. around yet. So this was anybody that would come up for the primaries. We okay. were still hosting primary debates up here before that. The Institute of Politics and the Institute for St. Anselm Studies started the same year. That's right. Yeah. So that's that's a year after the first conference. So this, this is the hotel where the, the reporters I think it was downtown. Staying. I think it was yeah. at the Holiday Inn downtown. It was the big. Is it, what, it was the biggest hotel in town at the time. I think that was later. It was something called the Wayfair. Or... Oh, the Wayfair in Bedford. That's right. Yeah. Where's the Wayfair in Bedford, which is now not there. I heard it's, yeah, it's it gone. Far it's too. gone. Uh, and so then I arranged, and I said, well, how am I going to get them back and forth? So we arranged to uh, rent a couple vans, and then I got one of the honor societies on campus to agree to be the drivers, uh, the Red Key Society, of which yeah. I am a member. My brother was a member. Uh, we got money from the college to uh, kind of underwrite this. I got money from another fund to pay for the keynote address mm -hmm. from Jillian Evans. And then, of course, we charged what I thought a modest conference fee. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were able to, to cover the cost and balance it. Um, I had arranged for meals, which was not that difficult to do. Uh, I arranged for the where the meetings would take place. Uh, that must involve yeah. a bit more headaches, though. Yeah. Well, not really. I mean, I just called. I mean... You know, I've been here since 1967. Uh, yeah. This is now 19. This is now 1999. People know me. People yeah, know yeah. who I am. So I can and I can pick up the phone and call Physical Plan and talk to the director of Physical Plan and say, uh, "What about this?" Then I can call whoever's in charge of the Cushing Center, which is the dean's office, mm -hmm. and say, "This weekend, what does it look like?" Nothing scheduled. All right, put me down. Yeah. Uh, for what? I said the entire main floor. I need the entire main floor. That's right. It was over. A lot of it was in the student center. It was most of it was in the student center. The keynote address was in the science building. Yeah. In the amphitheater, uh, and again, that was a phone call to another office. No, nothing scheduled for that evening. All right, I need it from this time to this time. The librarian was on the committee, so we had already talked about the reception here. So it it um, it worked out. It was. See, I don't. Doing something like that to me is not difficult. It's just a matter of thinking it through. What do I need and when do I need it? Yeah. And who do I need to contact to get it? And uh, if I've got a budget, how much is it going to cost and, and things like that? And yeah. It just kind of fell together. I mean, I had the great committee. and uh, But, uh, you know, it was fun. Uh, Jim O'Rourke and I went down to Boston to pick up Jillian Evans. We had a great talk. That's what she told us. She insisted on being called Jillian. Okay. Um, she didn't like, or Jill, uh, she didn't care for doctor or professor or any of that stuff. Um, and it was, and we had, that was basically, no, she was here. We had people from Canada down so I could, we could officially call it an international conference True, at yeah. that point, which was kind of cool. Um, so I, it, I think it went, it went as well as one could expect for a first time. Yeah. Or run. And then the outcome is this, I mean, part of it is this. Yeah, there's so many interlocking uh, parts to, to this now, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I can say, too, as, as, you know, I was in graduate school at the time, mm -hmm. and I was really fortunate to have come across the advertisement that mm -hmm. you sent out because um, it wasn't the, the, the sort of conference that you put together was not the sort of thing that I would have gotten introduced to in, mm -hmm. in the places that I was going. And yeah. it was so important for my formation as a scholar. Mm -hmm. You know, um, these seemingly fortuitous, you know, things coming together. But it, mm -hmm. if you hadn't put in all, if all of you hadn't put in all that work and preparation, mm -hmm. that wouldn't have been available. And I think there's going to be a lot of people over time who have stories like that, including mm -hmm. some who are not even in graduate school yet. Yeah. You know. Well, it's our hope. I mean, I the hope of this was that it would. It was never the idea that this would become, you know, this big big place because and some scholars are a small group of yeah. very dedicated people so the idea was to try to bring them together yeah. and provide them with a forum that they wouldn't have at a major conference 
you know, where you might mm-hmm. give a, have a paper to give on Anselm, but you could be with people from different disciplines who are simply covering that same time period or yeah. something loosely related to that topic and so on. So the idea was really to make a place where, and a, and a place for scholarship and research. So hence, the St. Anselm Studies Collection yeah, this has, has really moved on. So what we do now, because it, it is, uh, I believe it's the largest endowed collection in the library, whenever we buy something, we buy two. So one goes in here, which is non-circulating, and one goes into the circulation. Oh, that's great. So all of this is <coughs> available. We are now branching out into anything that comes out on Anselm in any language. Really? We've been looking for. One of the other wow. things I got, I started, I don't know if they've kept up with this, but I got a work-study student whose job for me was to do online research to find anything on Anselm and make sure we got a copy of it. So we have a huge collection yeah. of articles yeah. that are separately, they're printed, they're filed separately, and they're cataloged in the library collection center, Yeah, uh, which makes it a lot easier for research. We also uh, did the website. Uh, so we not only did the journal, online journal, but we also did a website where you can access the journal mm-hmm. and also get into the collection and and see what's uh, see what's available. The other thing about the website was to put on uh, links to other sites Anselm dealing with Anselm. Yeah. That would, and so my first work-study student, whose wedding I attended a couple of years ago, and they now have a little girl, and he was a criminal justice major of all things. Uh, but he worked for me. For, he transferred in at the middle of his freshman year, and he worked for me for three and a half years. Wow. Um, uh, and uh, he would he would check, and I every six months check the links. If they're gone, get rid of it, you know. And, so, and he was very good with computers. He was very savvy. So yeah. we kept everything up up to date. Um, and then after, uh, then I got another work study student after that, um, who did very, very much the same thing. Uh, was mostly that online research. Make sure we have whatever we have. Went through that bibliography that came out uh, uh, a few years ago, uh, maybe ten or fifteen years ago now. Um, make sure we have it. And have Everything that's bought a copy, mark it. Yeah. If we don't have it, if we have it, uh, it's been ordered. You know, so that we keep up with everything. So that was that was uh, that's what this has grown. So they put a lot of books in here just to fill it. So we have some of the rare books and yeah. you know, things. Not all of these things are about Anselm. Uh, and then the Aurochs very generously bought us a first print edition of the Cordeus Homo. Yeah, uh, over at uh, Southby's or Christie's over in London, which is very nice and yeah. very rare. Uh, but adds adds really a nice a nice quality to what's going on here. So I you know I'm pleased that this is one of the things I look back on. We dedicated the collection this year to the Aurora family, uh, and it was it was a nice ceremony. It was, mm-hmm. uh, brought back a lot of good memories uh, uh, of uh, the work that was done, the people that were involved. So. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk about? Or no, I I mean I was happy to get it started, but. I've moved on, and other people have yeah. done other things now. Maybe well, you've another left, year. You've really left a legacy. I may come back. Well, I, I don't want That's my nice. name on it. Um, so I told a couple of people who had a few dollars in their pocket that for a million dollars, <laughs> we'd name it. <laughs> it would be the such and such Institute for St. Anselm Studies. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, that hasn't come across yet, but this, you know, one hopes. One yeah. can always hope. Nice we got to get people really do. into St. Anselm and make that happen. You know? People, well, it's people all, got money. It's all relationships. It's all relationships. Yeah. This person, the one person I kind of had in line that didn't have a clue who Anselm was really, graduate of the college, but uh, science major, didn't care, but good relationships. And that's yeah. That's mostly what that's all about. So someday I'm sure it will come about. Monty is good about that, I think. So. I think you're right. Yeah. So he'll, he'll find something. My okay. in was I was on the board of trustees, yeah. So I had I had access to to some of the people the who did have a little, yeah. little bit of money in their pockets. All right. Well, thanks very much. For Thank you, time. Greg. Enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you. So, what would you like to know? All right. So I'm here with with Kevin Staley, uh, somebody who's important within the the narrative of the Saint Ansel, the Institute for Saint Anselm Studies, and the. the the collection of the Geisel Library. Um, 
some of the people who were talking about it mentioned this uh, bibliography that, that you started working on in 1990, was I it? I think it was night, the summer of 1990, if, okay. um, if I'm correct, but it was around that time. Yeah, so we had uh, the idea of an institute, uh, Jim O'Rourke uh, was talking about it one day in his office with Father John, and uh, St. Ace has summer grants. So I applied for a summer grant uh, that would help me or allow me, give me the time to compile the most complete bibliography I could mm -hmm. in, uh, in the period of, you know, a couple months over the summer. And so I did some research and I found that at that time there was a, a Canadian software company that um, had developed a, a bibliographical database that could fetch uh, data from okay. the web and bring it back in, in, in some form or another. Um, there wasn't too much of a web at that time, though, was there? In no, but there were um, there were uh, electronic databases. Yeah, I think Lanay Philologique was uh, had, a, had a, a database. Yeah, I forget the technical details, but in any in any event, that that allowed me to cast a relatively wide net, and I think I came up with about twelve hundred references. Okay. Of um, you know, articles, books, dissertations. Yeah. So why why Anselm in the first place? Is it well, it's St. Anselm College, so yeah. um, we all, a lot of people in the um, department are familiar with and do some work on Anselm. Including yourself? Yes, yeah. yeah. Most of my work on Anselm I've done in conjunction with the Institute. I've published a number of times in its journal I'm, uh, I'm You've presented a number of times as well at the conferences. Yeah. And, yeah. and as a part of that, I've debated Catherine Rogers, um, presented something on Eileen Sweeney's new book. Um, the Desire for the Word. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I've uh, put a lot of scholarly activity into the Institute as well, but I don't have an executive function. I was, uh, you know, sort of the seed, the ground, uh, the seed. Yeah, a lot of the people talked about that bibliography activity as, as being the spur to gathering all those those articles. Yeah, that was the purpose. Okay. Have a complete, get everything and anything that was published on Anselm with, and, and, and the circumference of materials yeah. that are relevant. I know for myself, like last time that I, I did a research residency here, Having all those articles in one place is really invaluable because I, uh, you know, there's something about being able to like hold them in your hands and pour right. through them, yeah. you know, as opposed to just reading them on a screen. Um, and I don't think anybody out there has access to all of those articles in one place electronically, you know. So if you instead if you come here, you, you can actually uh, you can actually see them. Yeah, I think that would be a nice step, though, to make the, elect the collection electronic. Yeah, it would certainly widen the, the scope because, I mean, on the one hand, you do want people to come here. You know, Correct. But, but on the other hand, you could be reaching a much wider uh, uh, set of audience. Um, it would just be convenient. Base. It would be yeah. very, very convenient. Um, yeah. But I don't know what the copyright issues would be. I imagine they would be multiple. Yes. And complicated. <laughs> yeah, and the, the collection of texts or books that we have is, is fairly uh, extensive as well. Yeah, and the dissertations. Um, I was surprised to see just how many they have in the, yeah. the, the, you know, many of them have never been published as books or even cannibalized to make articles, so being able to, to find those is, is really helpful. So you do work, a lot of work on Neoplatonism. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do a lot of work in metaphysics, and okay. so Neoplatonism yeah. uh, would be a part of that mix. So, you know, for people who are just they don't know that much about Anselm and are interested in, in what the institute does, Anselm, you know, he doesn't get an awful lot of credit as, as a, a major metaphysician. But would you say that he is one? Or? 
Well, that's difficult to say. It's, uh, he does not have uh, an explicitly held metaphysical position. Mm -hmm. uh, rather, I would say that his metaphysics is implicit. Yeah, you have to his, call it out of his text. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, you know, if I were to, and, and the metaphysics that you find in the monologia mm -hmm. uh, may not be the same one you find in the prosologia. Yeah. In the monologion, God ends up being the highest in nature, and the use of the superlative is, uh, is uh, yeah, the supremum. Yeah, the or the summa. That's and he right, calls yeah. it the summa. Yeah. So, yes, and so uh, and so you could be the highest in a series and still be a part of the series, mm -hmm. whereas that then which nothing greater can be conceived must be off the series. Yeah. Uh, and some people talk about that as a supreme concept as opposed to a, uh, a superlative or the summa natura versus the supreme on the ends. Yeah. Anselm actually criticizes, I mean, you know this, but they don't probably know this, Ganillo for mixing yes. the two of them up. That's right. That's right. Um, and I think he does that because obviously the logic of the argument requires that I can't yeah. just. I can't limit this, this, that, that, which nothing greater can be conceived. And of course, the end of the a series is just a limit. Do you think that a lot of the discussions that reframe the ontological argument in terms of a perfect being end up falling into treating God as, as you know, just the supreme being rather than being, you know, the, 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 the being, the, the God beyond? All of these, this, this other series of beings in the, the prosologia. Do I think the what though? The discussions that try to reframe it in terms of God <laughs> being perfect, being, you know, because that's been an attack that's taken by a lot of interpreters since Descartes. On, right. You know. Yeah, I suppose. Um, first of all, is there a difference uh, between the phrase "perfect being" and? Phrase that in which nothing greater can be conceived. Yeah. I would say, yeah, one is a substantive, yeah. one is a, an indefinite description based upon a certain kind of relation. It's hard to think of what could constitute being perfect unless you have, you know, something which is going to be perfect, something which is going to be perfected, brought to the highest level that it's. So then you've got some sort of capping, right? Uh, that would be part of the problem of the, of the logic of perfection. Yeah. Yeah. Is it the case that any conception of perfection requires a set of limits that are going to define what perfection means? Uh, and I think that that might be true. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to say about the Institute or your role in it? Or? It's, it's been a, 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 what a long, strange trip it's been. Yeah. yeah. I remember meeting you at the first St. Anselm conference, that was but, a, yeah, that was 15 nice. years ago. Yeah. So I had no idea that the, the back history had stretched back an additional 10 years. Yeah, it was sort of an idea in the making for quite some time. Yeah, well, certainly glad that it came to fruition. Yeah. People were beating down the doors. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much. Yeah.